ahead and get started. We may have a few others that do join us a little late, but we will certainly welcome them when they get here. And uh, for those that are with us right now, uh, thank you for getting on to our Quillo Nation call today. We've, we've got, a, I think, a, a good agenda in terms of uh, what we're going to talk about, which is um, really sharing a lot of good, good success stories. So um, I know with the folks that are on, you guys are doing some fabulous things. Just a reminder that we do record the session. So I just want to let folks um, remind you that we will be doing that. So to, to just kick us off with our agenda, here's what we'll be doing is uh, we'll share a little good news. Um, Rebecca will kick us off in that. Um, and then we'll introduce some of our own success stories as well as hear from our guest, uh, our special guest today, Craig D. Fassell, who is from Blitz. Um, we've had the, the pleasure of working with him. Um, he and his son do a fantastic uh, workshop. He'll We'll get more into details about some of that, but uh, he has heard and witnessed many success stories. And so um, I think we'll hear a lot of good things from Craig today. And, and, and again, just help remind us the importance of um, as leaders sharing those success stories. Um, and then of course, we'll wrap up with that moment for self-care, highlight a few great videos that help us all continue to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves. And then we'll wrap up and talk about the next call. So that's really kind of where we're heading. So welcome to all of those who just joined us. I see um, several faces there. Joanna, um, Sarah Bass is joining us here in a little bit. Um, Dave was on. So, so welcome to everybody who's, who's now joining us. We're just now getting kicked off. So we're glad you're here. But here are the states where individuals are from. And um, today, it looks like we do have a variety of folks from across the country. So um, we welcome everyone and hope you'll contribute as we talk about um, success stories. But first, let's just uh, go over to our good news bench. And uh, Rebecca, she updated our, our little bench with a little nice swing. So I'm gonna kick it over to Rebecca and she'll talk about our good news bench today. Yes, our last bench was a fall theme and I love fall, but after coming out of Minnesota winter, I needed some springtime. So we shifted to a springtime bench here. So um, for today's good, new, good news bench, um, because it's um, Disabilities Awareness Month as well as Down Syndrome Awareness Month, um, there's been just a lot of wonderful um, stories and posts and whatnot going around. And so I wanted to share one that um, I came across last week, um, I believe from Down Syndrome International. Some of you may have seen this already, um, this delightful song um, that Sting actually recorded called The Hiring Chain um, about employment. So we're gonna, I don't know if I can get this loaded up here, um, tune in here. So enjoy this and we'll be back, back in a moment. The baker had Simone, and everybody saw that she could do the job. The lawyer went to the baker and saw Simone at work. The lawyer hired John because the baker had Simone, the baker had Simone. The dentist went to the lawyer and saw John at work. The dentist had Sophia because the lawyer had John because the baker had Simone, the baker had Simone. The farmer went to the dentist and saw Sophia at work. The farmer had Kate because the dentist had Sophia because the lawyer had John because the baker had Simone, the baker had Simone. The farmer went to the farmer and saw Kate at work. The farmer had Paul because the farmer had because the dentist had to feel because the lawyer had John because the baker had some more the baker had some more the baker went to the barber and saw Paul at work he didn't have a clue but it was thanks to his first move that the barber had Paul because the farmer had Kate because the dentist had Sophia because the lawyer had John because the baker had some more. The baker had some more. The baker had some more. Yeah. I saw that 
it last week and just was like tapping my toes the whole time, got such a kick out of it. So um, I'll pop the um, link to that in, um, in the chat here if you're interested in sharing it around. But um, yeah, I just love the way that they use that um, you know, song to tell stories. We haven't gotten Sting to do any Quillo videos yet, maybe someday, but uh, um, yeah, just, just enjoyed that one. So um, if you're celebrating um, Disability Awareness Month or Down Syndrome Awareness Month and there's anything that you're doing, um, yeah, just hope that that's going well. So with that, we will keep the toe tapping and success sharing going and I will pass it on back to Sue to introduce our next session. Thanks, Rebecca. I have to say that 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 one just does bring that little beat to you and everything else. I, I actually showed it to my daughter. And as many of you know, um, my, my daughter Emily does have Down syndrome and and she just started dancing. <laughs> so um, I know it, it spoke to her. So very fun. Well, um, you know, success stories, so important that people hear them. And especially in times like we've just gone through in this past year, you know, people kind of get down and out a little bit. Um, and as leaders, which all of you are in your organizations, um, it's so critical and important that we continue to build folks up with just even sometimes the little successes that are taking place in our organizations. And I know many of you um, have, have done a fantastic job of keeping programs going, of keeping um, clients served, of, of making sure staff feel comfortable working in this type of environment. And so today, what we really want to do is leverage the good news and, and share what are people doing and how are you continuing to bring the services, um, the, the assistance that folks need, the um, employment of you know, the, the teams that you have where folks are, are comfortable. And um, to kind of kick us off, um, we have another video that we use uh, to, to also show that there are times in our lives where we feel like there is an enormous task or something that we're supposed to achieve. And, um, you know, again, sometimes we have to just put in perspective that it takes just the small things that we do to recognize and, and celebrate some of the, the small steps in order to make those big achievements. So I just want to kick us off with this particular video called From Rocks to Mountains to kind of put us in the mindset of thinking about what are those little things that you're doing that you can share with us after we show this video. Okay, go ahead, Rebecca. Have you ever heard of an incredible feat that seemed to move mountains? Sometimes big achievements may seem impossible or out of reach. We want to remind you that as a DSP, your actions do make a difference. Some things may feel like small victories. They ordered their own food at a restaurant. I helped on board a new DSP. We bonded over a love of the same kind of music. They got a second interview for a new job. I listened. I helped someone feel safe. As DSPs, it may feel like small victories sometimes, but even when we move a few rocks at a time, it can add up. As a DSP, you help move mountains. Well, hopefully that triggered some thoughts as you just listened to that, because we all have direct support professionals and team members and colleagues that we're working with even our, our clients um, and family members bring those little success stories our way. So um, I know that some of you um, have thought about this already and I'd like to just kind of open it up a little bit and hear maybe from one or two of you and then I'm gonna introduce our guest speaker who's with us today because he also has some great um, stories to tell in his uh, work. 
So let me just kind of open it up. As you have thought about this, as, as you saw that video play, what resonated? What are some of the success stories that are happening in your organizations? Who's going to go first? Sayar? So yeah, so I'm happy to go first. Um, I really feel like that this was a hard question for me to ask the answer because there's there's so much right now. There's a lot of stuff, and I feel really good being able to do that um, after the last year that we've um, lived through and kind of all the things that we've learned about ourselves. But um, I, I, two things in particular. One, we when we first started using Quillo, uh, we made the decision to go with Quillo specifically. Um, building up to a major um, transition of our case note system and our billing system and our payroll system. Uh, we've been planning for months in the midst of a pandemic um, to make this big shift in our, our operating um, process and kind of go to a universal system. And so we really saw a lot of value in Quillo um, in, 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 as, a, as a communication tool with our employees. We are a statewide home and community-based service provider, uh, and we have about 800 employees, and probably less than 10% of those folks do I get to actually come face-to-face -to -face with on a regular basis. And so communication is always a challenge. How do you, how do you engage people? How do you, you um, make sure that people have the information that they need, especially when we're changing the way you enter in your documentation and we're changing the way that you get paid and we're changing all of that stuff. So um, we, we implemented Quillo really hoping to kind of add to a tool. And so a, a tool, a communication tool and add to that toolbox. Um, and so we started, you know, kind of putting incentives out there. It was new, it was kind of an add-on. Um, we saw this really slow engagement, but we've paid a lot of attention to the dashboard and we've paid a lot of attention to just numbers. And a couple of weeks ago, we really saw this spike, not in users, um, but in videos watched. We, we saw this over a, a 30 day period. We had about 30 people that were active. Um, but those 30 people watched 142 videos. And so, you know, you, you, you do all this work and you put all this um, a, initiative and a, a, a attention into moving things forward. And then that first little blip on the, on the radar is exciting. Um, and then we started last week um, with our tutorial videos for our new system. We've taken all of the training aspects of that new system and broken them down into uh, 60 second bite sized pieces. And so we started our daily focuses um, pointing towards those tutorial videos on Monday. And since Monday, we've had 60 users added. Um, so the, the word is spreading and people recognize that this is, this is a, a valuable and legitimate tool. So we're really, really excited about that. And then the other good thing that, that um, the reason why I'm sitting in my car talking to you is because we are here in Arkansas, despite lots of really negative um, legislation this session that we're really, really concerned about, we have a coalition of people that are pushing for supported decision-making as, as a legal option and alternative to guardianship. And so that's what I'm, I'm doing today here to really try to push that across the the finish line this week and we're excited for that opportunity. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for, for sharing. And I'm excited to hear that, you know, the other systems are starting to launch out and how you're leveraging Quillo to help with that communication. So um, we did start to see an uptick. We were noticing uh, our support at my Quillo was getting a lot more emails and, <laughs> and we're like, something's happening in Arkansas. This, this, this week. So um, something's yeah. always happening in Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right. Well, let's hear maybe two more. Who else has a little success story that they would like to share? Dave, I see you have your mic off. Is that an indication you want to say something? Or did I catch? 
There you are. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I just had my mic off. I'm sorry. Your mic? Okay, that's fine. If you, yeah, that's fine. Do we still have, let's see. I, I see uh, we got Sarah. Sarah, your team's been doing some things. Do you want to share anything that you're, that's happening in your world? Well, we are getting people back, <laughs> our clients. And so that's good news. Um, and then we are just getting started with Quillo. So we've started implementing and people have lots of questions. Um, Sue, so you're gonna speak to my staff tomorrow actually, um, but uh, I think there's some interest. So we're having a little fun. That's great, yeah. good, okay. Anybody else, any other um, recognition for what your DSPs are doing out there, or what the, how, how the organization continued to provide the services and, and things that you're doing? Anyone else? Um, we're getting a little bit more back to normal. We were part of that big, uh, you know, that big storm and ended up losing a lot of group homes. And so we ended up being an emergency shelter for a while, which kind of took us off our usual mission. Um, but uh, we're, we're getting back uh, into our normal mission and the staff just did fantastic throughout that, that, whole, uh, that whole experience. Luckily, we never lost power and our pipes didn't break, but quite a few group homes had broken pipes up in the ceiling from the fire suppression systems. Uh, but the staff have been great. We're, we're um, uh, constantly talking with them and assessing what's needed over, uh, at our resource center. And, and we're about to be producing a bunch of um, gardening videos because we're uh, putting in our new garden and for sensory gardens and for our vegetable gardens too. So yeah, it, it's exciting to us because we all, it, the garden kind of has a very therapeutic value at the resource center. Yeah. You know, Dave, thanks for, for sharing a little bit about, you know, kind of what your team experienced through those storms and, and whatnot in Texas, because um, I know that those are the um, unforeseen circumstances that sometimes happen um, in an organization. And all of a sudden, you've got to take a quick 180 and say, oh my gosh, how are we gonna deal with this? And um, again, when your homes are impacted and whatnot, um, that certainly weighs on a lot of people, so. Yeah, we had 13 people in a four bed home. So it was wow. impressive. Yeah. And med time so, ended, so. <laughs> yeah, so, so a great acknowledgement to, to the staff and, and the folks that, that do that. Well, again, you can see, I mean, every day, there's just little things that I know that we can recognize and celebrate. So I'm gonna shift um, now to our speaker. Um, I'd like to, to welcome Craig um, DeFacel. Um, Craig, again, is with Blitz. And um, they actually are a team. He and his son, Scott, um, run a workshop called the DSP Magnet Workshop. Um, and we did have the pleasure last year um, of having them come in before all the COVID hit and whatnot um, to, to do the workshop with some of the local organizations. Um, but you know, throughout his years of working, he's heard from um, leadership as well as direct support professionals about some of the successes that they're, they're doing. Um, and he'll continue to share some of the ventures that he has had um, as a, per a person working in this field um, so I'd like to welcome Craig to us today. And uh, thanks again, Craig, for your involvement with um, the intellectual developmental uh, community. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to you and let you share a lot of the successes that you've had or seen along the way. Thanks, Sue, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, I mean, really this all came about because of this work and stuff. It, it's, Scott and I like to joke if we've had a hard week, our favorite thing to do at the end of the week is talk to a DSP. It always makes us feel better about humanity. And one thing I would encourage all of you to do is ask your DSPs, tell me about your best day on the job, either forever or the last week since we last met. What's good to get away from the question of how are you? And instead, you know, what's the best thing that's happened to you at work and personally? 
uh, you start building relationships and that makes it easier to talk about, you know, helping them with challenges. And of course, it starts building stories. And really this book came about sort of, we started getting stories and I started thinking about a book and Scott and I were actually challenged. We were at a, uh, a con an annual conference and a mentor challenges from on stage saying, you know, I think within the next three or four years, you guys are gonna write a book. And I, since I'd already been thinking about it, I just said, okay, Brent, challenge accepted. We're gonna do it, here's the title. The title came to me and that's sort of was the genesis of this. So as far as the stories, we always like to start off too. Um, go ahead, Sue, if you, or I mean, Rebecca, if you want. Yeah, uh, these are some of the bigger stories in the book. Actually, it's frustrating writing a book because I could build further on these stories. Probably one of my favorite stories to come out of this is the first picture of the two women upper left. Um, the one in the gray t-shirt is Alyssa Pittman. And Alyssa came to the attention, we've done a lot of work with one of the county boards here in Ohio. Ohio has a very active county board system. And they have a woman named Brandy who was attending a DD awareness bingo game. And she's always on the lookout for potential DSPs. And she noticed Alyssa because Alyssa was serving cookies and attending to the needs of all the people playing in the, in the, in the uh, bingo game and stuff. And, and Brandy leaned over to one of her coworkers and said, that's the best DSP I've ever seen. And she was told, no, she's not a DSP. She's a recipient of services. Mm -hmm. So Brandy was like, what? Uh, no, that's not enough. So she approached Alyssa and Alyssa was very worried about the idea of becoming a DSP. You know, Alyssa is very slow and deliberate in just making decisions, but, and Brandy had to work with her to make sure that she wouldn't lose benefits, but she started work, Alyssa started working part-time as a DSP. She went, underwent all the training. Now I believe she's working full-time. And of course, she brings the advantage of the perspective of so many years of receiving services. And she knows that ways to communicate. She's created fun word games to help with other people, the people she's supporting, help them with communicating. She's helped them realize, what do you want out of life? What, to, you know, how can I help you work toward these goals? Rather than saying, you know, come help me with dinner. It's like, would you like to help me with dinner? So she brings that perspective of really understanding what it's like to be on the receiving side of, of services. So I think, you know, I mean, this is a great example. There's also a, an academy in Washington, D, Washington, DC, where people with disabilities are being trained and certified as DSPs. So talk about opening up boundaries and, and seeing what's possible just by a little bit of outside the box thinking. Then the, the woman and the young man below, and that's uh, Ashley and Chad. And Ashley was in a meeting with Chad and his mother. And she asked Chad a question that I know John asked people. If you could do anything in the world, what would it be? And Chad was thinking about it for many, wasn't really sure, but then he thought back to the fact that he's enjoyed going to the Moose Lodge with his mom for various parties and a bar there. And he said, I'd like to be a bartender. So Ashley started looking around and found a bar that actually Chad and his mom had were semi-regulars at, so they knew him. They said, yeah, we'll do it, we'll let him do it. So they wound up packing the bar with friends and family and members and stuff. So when Chad was brought there by his mom, he had a lot of familiar faces and the manager during the evening came up saying, "You know, hey Chad, we didn't expect this bigger crowd. We're having some, we're a little bit short staffed. Would you help us? So Chad was helping serve drinks. He, they even helped, had him working a little bit at the cash register. At the end of the evening, they actually told Chad and his mom, he's welcome back here anytime he wants. So she really helped him live out a dream and it's opened up new opportunity. The other thing, one of the frustrating things about writing a book and particularly when you get to know some of these people is the book's going to print in the next couple of weeks. In fact, we're ordering the proof copies today. There's a terrible temptation to keep adding to these stories because since then, Chad really loves mowing lawns. So Ashley's gone out and gotten him some, some gigs mowing lawns for people for income. The other thing is Chad wanted to get healthier. Ashley and the rest of the team at his provider have helped Chad lose 100 pounds. And I can tell you from personal experience, losing 100 pounds is not an easy task. 
So, I mean, it, it's just amazing how building that close trusting relationship, the results it gets. And then of course you have maybe stories you've heard of before, the, the sort of the, you know, the really incredible things. I mean, we were talking about in that one video, talked about just small things. Um, and one of the stories in the book too is about a, a DSP working with a man who requires 24 seven care. All that man wanted was 10 or 15 minutes by himself. So the DSP worked for months with this young man to help him attain that you know, few minutes of alone time. And I know I have, there's another story in the book too, same thing where a DSP took advantage of COVID to take somebody who was a high care individual and help him achieve the necessary steps that now he gets about 14 hours a week of alone time. But then at the other extreme, maybe some of you have heard of John Cronin from John's Crazy Socks. John has Down syndrome. And when he was about to graduate from school, his dad asked him, what do you want to do? And John's answer was, I want to go into business with you. Now, John's dad had been doing some e-commerce things. And he knew John liked to wear really wild looking socks. So they decided to leverage that. And John designs these wild looking socks so they have built a business on this. The, uh, the first and most notable customer was President George Bush, Herbert Walker, the elder. And he was wearing John's crazy socks. He even wore them at First Lady Barbara Bush's funeral. You, there was a picture of, of President Bush in the wheelchair in those crazy socks. Uh, the other cool thing about John's crazy socks is they now are employing over 20 people of, as they put it, and I love the term, differing abilities. So they're providing work for people with disabilities and part of their proceeds are all donated to Special Olympics because John is an avid Special Olympian. He's won numerous medals. So here they've been able to create a whole business. I mean, last I heard it's doing over $4 million a year. So a very successful business leveraging something that John loves to do and helping others. And then if, if you have not seen the movie, The Peanut Butter Falcon, I would strongly recommend you do. It's, uh, if you're an Amazon Prime member, it's free on Amazon Prime now. Uh, I first saw it, my wife got it from the library. Zach Godsagan is the star of it. The creators of the movie met Zach at a camp for special needs kids and they, I, Zach had already done some like school plays and things like that, but they asked Zach again, if you could do anything in the world, what would you like to do? And Zach was almost without hesitation said, I want to be a movie star. So now they're put in the uncomfortable position of trying to explain to Zach, well, you know, Zach, there really aren't too many roles for a young man with Down syndrome. And Zach, without skipping a beat, said, you should write one. And so they did. Then, of course, they took this story outline to the, the money people in Hollywood, and they sort of liked it, but then the question they kept coming up with is, okay, well, who are we going to get to play the role of Zach? Who are we going to get to play the role of somebody with Down syndrome? And they said, no, no, you don't understand. Zach is going to star in this. And, of course, they met, you're probably not surprised, they met with the, the resistance of, no, that can't possibly happen. So these guys actually went out and shot some scenes with Zach in the role they, again, found out his interests or incorporated his personal interests and passions into the movie. So it's really a great movie. And of course, it has the authenticity because we didn't get an actor to play this role. We got Zach. So, I mean, those are some of the, the big stories. And then if Rebecca, you pop to the next slide. I mean, my favorite question is just ask DSPs, what's your best day on the job? And you'll find these quotes throughout the book. Each chapter has one. Uh, you know, one we were talking about this morning, somebody who was ready to quit, but they all her residents insisted on giving her cake to say goodbye. And they were so upset and crying. She just said, okay, I can't retire. She's still there today. Um, you know, these are the stories that just make me feel so fortunate and make me feel better about humanity, especially this last year has been a dumpster fire. People are at odds with one another. There just seems to be so much <laughs> hatred and anger. These stories can just really stand out. The other thing is I would encourage you, if you ask your DSPs, you'll notice all these quotes, they're like one or two sentences. 
Imagine putting one or two of these sentences on your job post, on your website, rather than approaching when you're trying to hire DSPs and explain, well, you, you, you support people with disabilities and help them with community inclusion. Put some of these quotes out, you know, doesn't feel like a job. I can't imagine life without them. Uh, you know, the, the stories, one of, one of the stories uh, too, uh, one of the early DSP interviews I had was, he has a gentleman in a wheelchair who just will not get involved with others. He just won't engage, but he's a huge Oakland Raiders fan. So this DSP found a DVD of the last time the Raiders won the Super Bowl and held a Super Bowl party for this gentleman. So the gentleman was excited, he got engaged, everybody was having a great time. I mean, this is the kind of creativity DSPs bring every day to the job, but we never hear these stories. Nobody knows what a DSP is. You can walk down the street, ask a hundred people, do you know what a DSP is? You'll probably fall over in shock if one of them answers yes. Um, so we've got an invisible profession serving and also sadly, often invisible population. So by sharing these stories, stories stick in people's minds. And I'm a firm believer, and it's one of the points of the book that advocacy can be a lot more effective if we start sharing these great stories, particularly with the decision makers, the legislators and stuff like that, because you know we all recognize the heroism of firefighters, soldiers. I mean, they wear uniforms, doctors, nurses, teachers, we all know what to say. We all see them, but DSPs don't wear, wear uh, uniforms. Most of us don't know what they do. So it's like the one thing we can make this stick in people's minds is talk about the outcomes. Just like that Sting video about hiring, how much good people, that you've got people with disabilities making real con contributions in society. The nice thing too is the people with disabilities, the turnover in the job market for them is extremely low. I realize this past year has sort of thrown a monkey wrench into a lot of things, but if you hire somebody with a disability, you have what, over an 80% chance of retaining them year after year. I mean, we've got other stories too of somebody who works in a, uh, a granite factory and um, his original job was to just to sort of fill the, the shelves, keep the shelves stocked. But he started looking for other tasks, talking to other people about how they do the job. So when he's out of work, he goes and finds something else to do to keep busy. You know, as a former employer and once having a man running a manufacturing company, an employee who will, when they finish with a task, will go find something else to do is worth their weight in gold. So to me, these are just you know wonderful opportunities. And these are the stories we want to share. We'll get much better support we'll start, people will start understanding what a DSP is. So I think there are several more slides of just, you know, these, these quotes too. So it's like, yeah, I did the bottom one. Scott, when he was doing one of his first DSP interviews, he said, tell me about your best day on the job. She said, oh, it's my first day back on vacation. And Scott said, oh, well, wait a minute. You've got to unpack that for me. I own my own business. I love what I do. But I guarantee you, my first day back from vacation isn't even close to my favorite day. She said, well, they're just so happy to have you back. You get lots of hugs. You see the smiling faces. They want to know what you're doing. It feels so good. You can put a quote like that into a job post and people are going to say, wow, I want a job where the best day is my first day back from vacation. I mean, how many jobs are there where you get paid to sort of get unconditional love and develop a second family? And we hear that, we hear, hear the word family over and over as we interact with providers and DSPs in particular. So, so yeah, I'm, you know, as far as too, I know 2020 was a horrible year and we're still coming out of the remnants of it. But with, Sue had mentioned the workshops we do and we have a whole series of workshops. We did a series of workshops with Licking County and half a dozen providers. And despite all the challenges of last year, they've reduced the turnover, these providers from 68% to 28%. And by using six months as the measuring stick for retention, 83% of the people they recruited last year are staying with the job. 
And the other thing is by doing things like by making job posts more appealing to potential candidates, putting in some of that personality from some of those quotes we were just sharing, they're getting better applicants. They're getting a better caliber of applicant. The applicants aren't ghosting. Admittedly, Brandy will not let anyone ghost. <laughs> She's a rock star, but what she does is very translatable. So I know it's challenge. It's you had enough challenges even before COVID. Since COVID, it's gotten far more challenging. But there are things you can still do, and that's you know to me. I know it gets so discouraging the challenges, but if you keep these positive stories in mind and remember why, that's gonna help you do a better job in every aspect. So, yeah, you know, again, from the workshops, you know, we hear this kind of thing, you know, people have, are implement things. And I, I wanna be clear, the book has an entire section that talks about what we do in the workshops some of the material comes straight out of our workshops and feedback from providers like you. So, I mean, you know, people hiring eight new DSP in the last week and three more ready to start. I mean, this was a small provider. So for them being able to hire eight new DSPs within a couple of weeks of this training was huge for them. And again, I know how difficult it is last year you've, and probably today, you've got people getting extended unemployment. There's also a huge fear factor for people, well, gee, what about, am I gonna, if I have to work in close proximity with people, am I going to expose myself to COVID? That's a real concern. And I know many of you, perhaps your state is making DSPs and the people you serve a priority on vaccinations. It seems to be not only up and down among states, it's even up and down depending on the region of Ohio here. Uh, some of our providers, everybody's been vaccinated, others are still on a waiting list. So I know I'm excited. I've gotten my second vaccine and uh, the two week mark hits this Sunday. So my wife and I are going out to dinner. <laughs> a little good news for us. It's only been like a year and a half since our favorite restaurant. The thing is, if you keep things positive, there, it is possible. You can change the, the dynamics of your organization. Um, this is the CEO of a very small provider here in Ohio. Justin still does direct care shifts himself. He was a DSP and decided to start his own provider organization. Um, had the good pleasure of working with him uh, end of last year, earlier this year. And he just volunteered this for us because he's just, he feels by the, the fact that so much of what we talked about were positive things, positive interactions, sharing that positive feeling and sharing some of those stories with potential candidates that, uh, you know, he's found that he's happy, his employees are happy, and he feels on solid footing moving forward this year. I know one of the things we suggested, and here's sort of a free tip for you, a lot of you probably have referral programs for recruiting new DSPs. Have you ever considered about asking former DSPs who left under good circumstances, maybe they worked for you while they're in college or something, ask them if they can refer someone to you. Justin did this. I, another provider came up with a name for it. It's not in the book. I, again, I resisted the edit. The DSP alumni program, uh, where he's doing outreach to former employees and stuff. When Justin did this, he reached out to five. Two of them said, well, wait a minute. I'm not happy where I am. Can I come back? So he hired two people simply by reaching out and reminding them of this work. So you never know what that can lead to. Again, just taking that positive, proactive mindset can make a huge difference for your organization and, the, and more importantly, the people we support. So I'd be happy to answer any questions or, you know, we do, uh, the book is, you know, as I said, the, uh, I'm ordering today the, uh, the proof copies. We hope to actually have the, uh, the books available by mid to late April. If someone's interested in ordering it, um, you know, you can go ahead and order it today at the, the website, but you know, you will get immediately a PDF of the intro. Uh, we were lucky enough that we've had a good relationship with Director Jeff Davis, who's the director of the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities. 
So he wrote the foreword and we'll send you a PDF with the intro of the foreword and the first three chapters. The other thing is I'd be happy to offer you a free DSP job post audit for us, um, for you. Um, one of the people that we did this for was able to hire 170, got 173 applicants within the, within the first 48 hours of making the changes to the job post we provided. Um, so it, you know, it can have real impact. And then of course, once we get the book, uh, Scott and I are happy to sign it if you want that personalized or, or you can get it without the personalization and we will send it to you, uh, free shipping, so. That's it, happy to answer any questions for you. The book's like, it, it's got, right at this point, we're only offering in hardcover. It's like, I think 234 pages long, something like that, so. Right. Thank you Thanks, very much, Craig. Craig yeah. Uh, this is John. I, I just had the good fortune of working with Craig and Scott, and they asked me to read the book early on in draft stage. And it is a great, not only compilation of great positive stories, but the thing I found in the book that was so helpful, and we don't sell things to you on Quillo. We don't bring things in. Uh, we brought this in because it's really a great resource. And it talks about the things that we feel at Quillo are very important, the positive psychology and communicating back to folks that level of appreciation we have. But the book is more of a workbook that takes you through everything from how do you write an ad to begin talking about how do you onboard people and how do you do that in a way that builds them up in success. And it's, it is a quick read. It is one you think as you read a chapter, you said, we could do this. And so, Craig, thank you. This has been a labor of love, I know. And I can only imagine how you keep wanting to do version two or the next edition. But uh, thanks for spending time with us today. And they really have cracked the code with what they're doing. And so um, it's a great, great resource for you to get into it. And they're, they're great people to talk to as well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and if somebody has a question or a problem, just just reach out to us, call us. We are always happy to to share and see if we can offer any help. Great. Okay. Well, thanks, um, Craig, for joining us today. John, for sharing a little bit about your insight after having the opportunity to to read um, everything. So um, again. I don't know about you guys, but just having, being on here today and listening to success, you know, what people are saying, you know, why DSPs are, are staying with us. Um, again, I don't know what your leadership is, but are, are, are you doing that? Are you taking the time? And, um, you know, like some of you stated, you know, use Quillo to share some of those messages with your folks. I think that's everybody needs a little inoculation every now and then of something good that's happening. So, so leverage the tool and um, hopefully we hear more success stories as we continue throughout the year. Um, of course, it's always important to take a moment for yourself. Um, and so tonight, today we're gonna highlight um, three videos that if you do a search on the search bar on the app, um, I think you will find that these um, videos do just that. They give you a little inoculation. Um, all of these videos are actually produced by our friends at MHMRTC, that's uh, Tarrant County. Um, those folks are with us today. There's Dave and Joanna and Kendra. Um, thanks you guys very much for, for putting these videos together. They, they again are are very fun to watch and, and like I said, give us that little inoculation sometimes what we need. But one is good morning challenge. Joanna challenges to say good morning to someone and find out what the reaction is that you get. Um, the Sunday scaries, I don't know about you, but oftentimes, um, you know, I know Monday's rolling around. So Matthew gives you a little insight on how to get yourself prepared. And he calls it the Sunday scaries. I kind of like how he uses that phrase. And then Kendra did a nice video on um, sensory grounding. And again, a very good technique to use. Um, this is one that I kind of noted myself to say, you know what, next time I need, or I'm in a situation where someone needs to be calmed down, 
I'm going to try her five, four, three, two, one technique. So again, some very valuable insight and, and ways that you can also take care of yourself. So again, thanks to our friends for, for sharing those particular videos with us. Um, finally, I just want to, you know, open it back up one last time. Um, any, any other success stories, things that are kind of resonating now for you since we've had the conversation we just did? Anyone? Joanna? Um, I'm like having so much fun with these videos. <laughs> <laughs> I just wake up, I'll be asleep and I wake up, I was like, oh, I wanna make a video today. And I just get excited. And actually I'm working on another one right now, I'm making Eastery. And so I'm prepping yeah. that right now. And it's just, I'm just having fun. Excellent. And Great. sharing it. And I also posted that challenge on Facebook and multiple people copy that and did that. And I've got over a hundred likes on it and other people are getting likes on it. And then they just started telling other people, good morning. And it's just, it, it just went crazy. And so that was kind of cool because it was something simple that I had did. And I was just wondering how it would turn out and people actually liked it. And it made you feel good. Instead of the, the hiring chain, you, you've created a good morning chain. That's wonderful. Yes. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was cool. So thank you guys for helping me to see things differently. And Thanks, share. Hmm? And keep, keep the video ideas coming. We, like I said, we, <laughs> we enjoyed watching some of the videos. And again, you guys do some um, good, good videos that really help us promote the success of others. You're going to like our gardening one. I got a couple of those coming right now too. I'm working on. Great. Excellent. Awesome. Anyone else? The I would just add on a personal note because she's so quiet. She doesn't participate in a lot of the, uh, the videos and I'll get myself in trouble, but my daughter Kisa is getting married on April 3rd and mm -hmm. right. She's going to go on her honeymoon on the 16th. So show up on the 15th and you can uh, wish her bon voyage on their honeymoon as they leave. So <laughs> very proud of her. So, Yeah, we're excited for Kisa and Tom. So um, we're going to let them go on a honeymoon though. We are going to let them do that. So. <laughs> Again, I just want to thank Craig very much for sharing your time with us today. Um, Again, if anyone would like to pre-order the book, feel free to do that. Um, and Craig, keep the success stories coming. I think, again, everybody needs to hear those type of things. Thank you. Yeah, especially in this day and age. And that's the good morning thing is what you're talking about. It's great because I think people are hungry to hear some good news. Absolutely. Okay. Well, everyone, our next call is going to be on April 15th. So mark your calendars now. Just do a placeholder in there. And, and of course, in about a week, we will send out a, a formal invitation. Um, but our topic is going to be around uh, growth. So um, we are in the midst of figuring out exactly kind of the context of where that's heading. But um, we hope that you will join us and be able to share more stories around how things are heading in a growth pattern for you. So thank you very much for today and being with us. Everyone have a great rest of the week and we'll see you on the 15th. Take care now. Bye everyone.